In this video, we are going to talk about the Jeffrey Dahmer. Before starting this video like this video. And subscribe to our channel for future updates. Between 1978 and 1991, Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer, DMR, May 21, 1960, November 28, 1994, commonly known as the Milwaukee Cannibal or the Milwaukee Monster, was an American serial killer and sex offender who murdered and dismembered 17 men and boys. Necrophilia, cannibalism, and the permanent preservation of body parts typically all or part of the skeleton were all common themes in his later killings. Dahmer was ruled to be legally sane at his trial, despite having been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, schizotypal personality disorder, and a psychotic disorder. On February 17, 1992, he was found guilty of 15 of the 16 murders he committed in Wisconsin and sentenced to 15 life sentences. For an extra crime committed in Ohio in 1978, Dahmer was sentenced to a 16th life sentence. According to certain stories, Dahmer was neglected as a child. Other reports, on the other hand, claim that Dahmer was usually spoiled as a baby and toddler by both parents, despite the fact that his mother was known to be tense, eager for attention and pity, and combative with her husband and neighbors. Lionel's university studies kept him away from home much of the time when Dahmer reached first grade, and when he was home, his wife, a hypochondriac with depression, required constant attention and spent an increasing amount of time in bed. She is reported to have attempted suicide with Equinal on one occasion. As a result, neither parent spent much time with their kid, who subsequently recalled feeling unsure of the family's solidity from an early age, noting high stress and constant disagreements between his parents during his childhood. Dahmer had been an energetic and joyful child until double hernia surgery just before his fourth birthday, when he became noticeably depressed. Dahmer was seen as shy and timid in primary school, one teacher subsequently recalled seeing early signs of abandonment in Dahmer as a result of his mother's illnesses, which worsened when she became pregnant with her second child. Dahmer has a fascination with dead animals since he was a child. His obsession with dead animals may have began when he watched his father collecting animal bones from beneath the family home when he was four years old. Dahmer was oddly pleased by the music the bones made, according to Lionel, and became obsessed with animal bones, which he dubbed his fiddlesticks at first. He periodically looked for more bones beneath and around the family home, as well as exploring the bodies of live animals to see where their bones were. The family relocated to Bath Township, Summit County, Ohio, in 1968. This was the Dahmer's sixth address since their marriage, and their third in two years. The house was set on 1.5 acres of woodland, with a little cabin just a short walk away where Dahmer began collecting huge insects like dragonflies and moths, as well as the skeletons of small creatures like chipmunks and squirrels. Some of these skeletons were preserved in formaldehyde jars and stored within the hut. Dahmer asked Lionel what would happen if the chicken bones were put in bleach two years later during a chicken meal. Lionel taught how to safely bleach and preserve animal bones, pleased by what he thought was his son's scientific enthusiasm. Dahmer began gathering dead animals, including roadkill, which he would dissect and bury alongside the cabin, with the heads occasionally placed atop homemade crosses. According to one of his friends, Dahmer told him that he was interested in how animals fit together. In 1975, in the woods behind his house, Dahmer beheaded a dog's carcass before fastening the body to a tree and impaling the skull on a stick. He later invited a buddy to see the display as a prank, claiming he had discovered the bones by accident. Joyce began increasing her daily usage of equinol, laxatives, and sleeping medications the same year Lionel taught his son how to preserve animal bones, further decreasing her tangible touch with her husband and children. Dahmer was transported to the Columbia Correctional Institution after his sentencing. Dahmer was put in solitary confinement for the first year of his incarceration owing to fears for his physical safety if he came into touch with other convicts. After a year in solitary confinement, Dahmer was moved to a less restrictive unit with his cooperation, where he was assigned a two-hour daily labor detail cleaning the toilet block. Dahmer had demanded a copy of the Bible from Detective Murphy shortly after making his long confessions in 1991. Dahmer gradually devoted himself to Christianity and became a born-again Christian when this request was fulfilled. He also read creationist books from the Institute for Creation Research at his father's request. In the prison whirlpool in May 1994, Dahmer was baptized by Roy Ratcliffe, a minister in the Church of Christ and a graduate of Oklahoma Christian University. 
Ratcliffe paid weekly visits to Dahmer after his baptism until November 1994. Dahmer and Ratcliffe talked about death on a frequent basis, and Dahmer wondered if continuing to live was a transgression against God. In a 1994 interview with Stone Phillips on Dateline NBC, Dahmer claimed about his crimes, what good is it to attempt to change your behavior to keep it within acceptable parameters if you don't believe there is a God to be answerable to? That was my initial thought. On July 3, 1994, as Dahmer sat in the prison chapel following the weekly church service, a fellow inmate, Osvaldo Deruthi, attempted to cut his throat with a razor embedded in a toothbrush. In this incident, Dahmer got only minor injuries and was not gravely harmed. Dahmer's family claims that he had long been prepared to die and had accepted any punishment he could receive in prison. Dahmer's mother, Joyce, was in touch with her son on a regular basis in addition to his father and stepmother, although prior to his arrest, the two had not seen each other since Christmas 1983. When Joyce expressed concern for her son's physical well-being in her weekly phone calls, Dahmer answered with words to the effect of, it makes no difference, mom. It makes no difference to me if something bad happens to me. On November 28, 1994, Dahmer got out of his cell to go to his assigned work detail. Jesse Anderson and Christopher Scarver, two other convicts, accompanied him. For almost 20 minutes, the trio was left alone in the prison gym's showers. It was around 8.10 a.m. Dahmer was found with significant head wounds on the gym's lavatory floor. He had been violently bludgeoned about the head and face with a 20-inch, 51-centimeter, metal bar. During the assault, his head had been repeatedly smashed against the wall. Despite the fact that Dahmer was still alive and was brought to a local hospital, he died an hour later. Anderson was also beaten with the same tool and died from his wounds two days later. Scarver, who was serving a life sentence for a 1990 murder, told officials that he first assaulted Dahmer with the metal bar while he, Dahmer, was cleaning a staff locker room, then attacked Anderson while he, Anderson, was cleaning an inmate locker room. According to Scarver, when Dahmer was attacked, he did not yell or make any noise. Scarver, who was assumed to be psychotic, went to his cell immediately after attacking both men and notified a jail guard, it was something God instructed me to do. Jesse Anderson and Jeffrey Dahmer are both no longer alive. Scarver insisted he had not planned the attacks ahead of time, although subsequently admitting to investigators that he had hidden the 20-inch iron rod used to kill both men in his clothing just before the deaths. Dahmer's mother Joyce reacted violently to the media after learning of his death, is everyone pleased now? Is that good enough for everyone now that he's been bludgeoned to death? Families of Dahmer's victims had diverse reactions, however it appears that the majority were relieved at his death. The prosecutor who tried Dahmer warned against making Scarver a folk hero, pointing out that Dahmer's death was still murder. Scarver was sentenced to two further life sentences for the killings of Dahmer and Anderson on May 15, 1995. Scarver claims that he cornered Dahmer just before murdering him, presented him with a newspaper article detailing Dahmer's crimes, and requested that Dahmer confirm whether or not the account was real. Scarver also claimed that Dahmer's crimes revolted him, and that Dahmer was openly unrepentant, that Dahmer taunted prison employees and fellow inmates by shaping his prison food into imitations of severed limbs, complete with ketchup to simulate blood spattering, and that prison staff, aware of Scarver's hatred for Dahmer, had purposefully left the two men unsupervised so that he could kill him. Furthermore, according to Scarver, Dahmer was so despised by his fellow inmates that he needed a special escort of at least one guard any time he left his cell to prevent inmates from attacking him. In his will, Dahmer specified that he did not want any services held and that he wanted to be cremated. Dahmer's body was burned in September 1995, and his ashes were shared between his parents. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.